Um, welcome everybody. Um, we're glad you could join us today. Um, I'm Darcy with Dog to Dog, and this is my business partner and mentor, Scott Minson. Um, <laughs> and this is Gypsy. So, uh, you know, today we're talking about um, getting puppies um, and getting a dog and how you add them into your family. Um, and I wanted you all to meet Gypsy if you haven't met her. She is just love being on the chair right now. Um, but so I'm going to tell you a little story about like actually how I got her. Um, uh, let's see. I had a Karen Terrier and she was about 16 years old. Um, and she just like was so much fun. And I had other dogs. I had a little Chihuahua. I had had um or have a Staffordshire Terrier and um, losing a dog and knowing that I was going to have to put her down um, is, you know, part of life, but it's not the fun part. And so, uh, you know, Scott and I had tons of conversations about what kind of dog I was going to get next um, and the purpose of that dog. And so, um, through lots of conversation and things like that, um, decided on an Airedale. So um, what I wanted to look for was temperament, and we'll talk about that as we go today, um, and working drives. So uh, I found a couple breeders. Um, we decided to go on a little trip and uh, we went down there and we met this guy and we saw all of his, his dogs. Um, and he's been breeding forever, probably like 25 years, 27 years, something like that. Um, and when he was showing me Gypsy's mother and Gypsy's father, um, and I really had no intention to put money down um, on a deposit for a dog. But that day when I saw those dogs and his dogs in what a um, amazing, <coughs> job he has done as a breeder to uh, breed for temperament and working drives. Um, I had to like scrounge together and ask Scott for 20 more dollars so I could give the guy a deposit. And I waited probably almost a year before uh, Gypsy was born. And then when she was old enough, I went down um, and I picked my pup. But the thing is, is I was really kind of um, thoughtful about it. Um, I just didn't make an impulse decision. Uh, there was a lot of conversation um, because, we, especially with an Airedale, she's a black Airedale. Uh, we could have a whole conversation on Airedales and coloring and all that kind of a thing. But she's um, uh, all black. Um, he breeds the black and tans and also red. So um, it was the most joyful thing, being able to pick a dog for what I really wanted. Um, it was intense because I had some issues with her as a young pup um, with potty training. Um, and everything that has happened with her, nothing has gone just smooth as silk. So I have learned a ton by first what kind of dog do I want and doing research and finding a breeder and all that kind of stuff that it took time it took patience um, and it has been worth everything because of what I have now and the things that she does um, that I'm training her for so uh, ESD work um, some detector dog work stuff but it's possible because we picked for her temperament and working drive. Um, anyway, so that's kind of my little story about getting Gypsy. And um, we would love to be able to give you some uh, information today that if you're thinking about adding a puppy or you're going to add a, an older dog into your household, um, that we can give you some things to, to think about. So there you go. Whoa. You ready? Okay. Um, this is uh, 
when all this happened with Darcy, uh, she was a professional. Um, so you really aren't uh, exempt from anxiety. Um, I can tell you that rushing out uh, to the nearest litter uh, of, of puppies, guys, all puppies are cute. That's, I mean, you just have to get that in your head. All puppies are cute. Now, let's go through a series of things that we hear all the time. This, uh, guys, th this is pervasive. We hear it all the time. You know, should I get a puppy or should I get an older dog? Should I rescue? Now, you're going to hear me talk about this through this a lot, okay? Um, you have to go with your heart. Uh, be careful. We're going to give you some guidelines, but truly, in the end, the reason Dars was successful with Gypsy, because she had a UTI issue, uh, th th there were some issues that were just hard um, for her, was because she loved the dog. If that makes sense. If, if you choose a dog or a puppy where you're not quite sure, you know, you're in, uh, a, but, but it's sure pretty, that kind of thing, and then the whole puppy new dog thing starts to happen. We have potty training issues, we have destructive issues, we have digging issues, barking, biting me, all the stuff, jumping up on everybody that comes in the door, and you don't love that dog. You haven't chosen the dog according to your heart, that bond, I'm a big believer in that. That you're, you know, the, the dog, in fact, I'll, I'm gonna tell you a really quick little story. My, my sweet wife, bless her, um, she's departed now, but um, she was a dachshund person. She always wanted a dachshund. Okay, I, I'm not a huge dachshund fan, but that's, that they're cute, whatever. So we found, we did some research. Um, I found a lady I talked to, I really liked what she was saying. Say we've got a litter on the ground. Uh, they're, they're pretty much ready to rock and roll. They're right around eight weeks old. Um, so I took Cindy over to the house. Um, they had a couple of folding chairs and the, the pups were in a, a living room area. And there were six puppies. There were five girls and one boy. And of course, I'm a professional, okay? I mean, it's, you know, at that time, it was about 25, 24 years worth of work. That was a long time ago. And so I'm looking. I'm looking for behavior. I'm looking for whatever. Um, well, the four girls with kind of the boy as a satellite over here, they're over in the corner and they're jumping up on the gate where all the people are and stuff. And there was one little female. She was the runt, which doesn't really mean a lot, by the way, except for often, as long as it's healthy, the runt has been held longer than any other puppy because they're cute, right? This little dog comes over and sits under my wife's chair. And she, she picked her up, you know, and, and I mean, I, later, I mean, I realized I was seeing a bond that was going to last for 13 years right there. She put the puppy down because she, you know, she's married to a professional guy. So I'm going to look at the other puppies, you know, whatever and stuff. And this puppy sat right next to her. The other pup said, yeah, they were friendly, but they'd immediately run over and jump on the gate. And Pretzel, we named this dog Pretzel, would sit underneath Cindy's chair until she picked her up. And both of our hearts, I mean, we just knew, uh, but I see, I wondered, am I doing this wrong? Am I, am I, am I checklist? Am I, am I, this isn't good, you know? Best thing we ever did. She was one of the best little dogs we ever owned. And she and my wife were soulmates for a long, long time. Okay, first question, right? Do I get a pup or do I get an older dog? Puppies are going to be a commitment similar to a baby for a period of time. Not like a baby. It's not going to be years and years. Uh, we hear all the time, you know, my, my dog's still a puppy, you know, whatever. And we'll say, well, how old is it? You know, it's only 14 months old. Guys, the dog is sexually mature at eight months old. Okay, that's, that's, they're not puppies at that stage. They're, they're late adolescence or early adulthood. The seven-year thing, that, that is an average over a dog's lifetime. But in truth, starting at four months till about 10 or 11 months, they're going to be adolescent. And they're going to go through in six or seven or eight months, unless it's a giant breed, and then it could be a year and a half. 
They're going to they're go through that whole thing you did from 12 to 18 in a space of, of several months. They can be challenging. The whole reason we're talking about this is training, dog knowledge, the why is what will make a difference in your life. That, that is knowing the law, know, knowing what will happen, what would be occurring in that puppy's life as it was growing with other dogs. That's what we're here for, that's, that's our purpose. So whether you do a puppy or older, you have to do a little bit of research. Well, and with the puppy, see, Maggie was 16. I hadn't had a puppy in 16 years. <laughs> I mean, That's a long time. I mean, I had the Chihuahua. She was a year old when I got her about. I had my Staffordshire Terrier. I got him at about a year old. So I didn't have to do all this weird potty training stuff and puppy things because they were about a year old. They were young um, adults. And so um, the whole potty training thing, the sleep deprivation, um, I thought there were days I was not gonna quite make it, um, especially with the UTI thing. Um, but we've had clients that have had uh, parasite issues um, that then it complicates everything that we're doing and that it, at least I knew what I was supposed to do and what I needed to do. And I did those things and, you know, it sorted itself out, but um, it was, it was rough for a while. <laughs> now, that's what we're here for. Okay, we teach a puppy seminar. That's, that's what we're here for. And it's, it's, it's inclusive, guys. It's not just about training. This is about good citizenship, good ownership of a dog and a human, two separate species, but it can all be done. There's, there's ways to communicate even with a puppy. Now, Dars came in uh, what, what I call green as a puppy. Okay, the puppy was six weeks old. It's a puppy puppy. Okay, little teeny. So uh, that gives you another couple of weeks before a lot, a lot of breeders won't come out until eight, eight or 10 weeks old. And it will depend because at about 16 weeks old, your dog's gonna start early adolescence, okay? That is part of having a puppy. But they are a joyful, unbelievably wonderful thing with a little bit of direction. Older dogs. Well, I guess I better go to the shelter. That is awesome. Um, you're, you're, uh, the people who rescue dogs and stuff, we just love them to death. But you must ask yourself certain questions. Okay, you have to. Um, why is the dog in the shelter? Okay, what am I seeing? And your hearts will go out, just like they will, will to the cute puppy. Your heart's going to go out to a dog that to you appears to be uh, troubled. It, it's the best word, probably. Um, over in the corner, eyes cranked open. You see it on social media all the time. And now look, okay, we're professionals. Okay, so we see what happens times a bajillion. I mean, I've seen thousands and thousands of dogs in my career. And so we see what happens at your home when uh, a choice is made that is all just emotional heart. And often the puppy or, or the dog reaches in and touches. That looks like me. I'm afraid, I'm anxious, whatever. Well, it's not you. It's not a human. Um, fear is a tough thing. You want to realize your long-term commitment here, and when we get the dog back into the home and we start having some, some behavioral issues, after about two or three weeks, the dog kind of blooms, so to speak, and we can have issues. That's what we're here for. Hello, that, that's what we do, is sort that kind of thing. But selection is everything. Now, let me give you some advice. Some of the best older dogs from I don't know, two or three up to geriatric, six, seven, eight, nine years old, will come from your good rescue people. Okay, there's an, I've worked with many of the rescue uh, organizations, uh, Golden Retrievers, Great Danes, Springer Spaniels, I mean, all, all that kind of thing. We're here to help you with that kind of thing. If you have questions and stuff, you know, about what you're seeing, what, what, what's up, that, that is why we do what we do. 
but they know these dogs often. Uh, they will be very upfront about the history of the dog. There, there's, uh, there's often a, a lot of richness in the history that you can get from a rescue person uh, as opposed to um, a pound or, or something like that where they have to take whatever the person says who drops the dog off, say, you know, I have allergies, I'm moving, you know, blah, blah, blah. And some of that may be true, some of it may not be. It, it, it depends. And you as the person who's gonna bring this dog into your home, well, we can have a problem there, okay? Because I know you, you're good people. And part of the problem that happens is your heart now is, is in this dog. And we see this a lot where they say, oh my gosh, tears, you know, I'm gonna have to get rid of this dog. I can't, you know, I mean, I've done my best, but whatever. That is rarely the case. Guys, that's rarely the case, you know, but with some training and some direction, I promise, you know, you can live joyfully with the dog. But as we say, there are always two things you can do with behavior. One, you can modify. That's what training is, law. You modify the behavior. But some of it is genetically oriented, and any breeder will tell you this, and we'll talk about this in just a second, that there's certain character traits, there's certain drives that exist that don't make a dog a real good pet in home A, where home B, they would be the greatest thing ever. Well, and if I think about um, going back to Gypsy, uh, she is much dog. And if uh, somebody just was a new dog owner and they got her, uh, possible that she could have ended up in a shelter because she is high drive. She has two speeds. She's on and she's moving or she's, you know, I lock sleeping her. Like it is. Yeah, I tell her to lay down and stay and she goes out and she's sleeping. So, I mean, thinking about those things, how do you live your life? What do you want the dog for? Uh, do you, can you handle hair? Can you not handle hair? Um, the other thing I always think about when people call me, if they're gonna go look at a puppy or even if they're gonna go to a rescue to look at dogs, I tell parents, do not bring your children because you know all puppies are cute um, and if you're looking at a shelter they might see a dog that they like the way that one looks um, but the the parents you know mom or dad it's like you need to be able to uh, make that commitment and have that like that's the dog before you bring kids into it because kids will want two, two of the puppies and I mean sometimes we've seen that they make uh, emotional decisions um, because they're trying to make their kids happy um, where if you decide what you're doing with a puppy or another dog and you bring it home the kids are gonna love the dog so um, that's one of my recommendations is you don't take kids to look at pups until you pick them you'd be in trouble if you do. Uh, most of our, uh, let, let's talk a couple of really basic deals. Gender, male or female, we don't care. Okay, there's uh, guys, it's like, what car brand do you like? What, you know, what, what do you drink? What, it, 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 there's 10 billion opinions out there. But I've worked dogs for 36 years, and I can tell you that as a platform, to raise and have a dog, in, in general, you're not, you know, we as trainers don't care what the gender of the dog is. So don't let that sort you away from your heart. Say, well, I was, I was just dead set on getting a male, whatever. Well, if you have a little female that comes and sits out, you know, and you start to bond, that's not going to affect your training per se. Um, will behaviors be different, especially with multiple dogs? Yes, it's a matriarchal society. In general, female will rule. Um, but overall, you know, gender isn't going to affect your companionship. Uh, breed type. Okay, what, what kind of dog? Well, guys, we, we could be on here for 20 hours about breed. Um, here's some general guidelines. Read about the breed type that you're thinking about. As an example, terriers. This is a terrier person, mm -hmm. okay? 
um, and her sweet daughter Sam, our, our instructor, they're 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 fiery themselves. You know, this has vinegar. Can you tell? And terriers are going to be little packets or even a big packet. I mean, this is a 65 pound terrier. Gypsy is of dynamite. I had a family. I came in. I was teaching the down command and some stay, whatever. And they we can't have this look, right? I said, what's up? What's, what's going on? Well, Scott, uh, we don't know if you'll believe this, but we've never seen the dog lay down. I said, what? We're sure he sleeps, but we've never seen him asleep. Not since we got him at 14 weeks. This is a Jack Russell Terrier. Um, the movie The Mask and the TV show Frasier, like so many things, pushed a whole bunch of that. Uh, you know, and the Jack Russell Terrier, boom! You know, and people say, oh, I want that little Eddie dog, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you knew the background of Eddie and the, the, the woman who was able to train him uh, and the efforts at, that she put into training that dog, people would be a little bit different. Yeah, are Jack Russell Terriers darling? Yes, they're darling. Are Karen Terriers darling? Yes. Or yes, yes, yes. Rat Terriers. Uh, wire fox, smooth fox, you know, it goes on and on. But they're terriers. They are a working breed. And they are very energetic. So, is that, are you a really, you know, you want a dog that just is a full of pizzazz. You know, it's, we're going to play ball, or we're going to do fly ball, or we're going to, a terrier may be for you. Um, hounds. Hounds are... <laughs> Interesting, but they are very much working dogs, and they are some of the most beautiful animals, some of them that, that live. But you know, people say, as We have a friend of ours, you know, so I want a bloodhound. Scott, what do you think? I said, Well, it could weigh 185 pounds. Well, they don't get quite that big, do they? Yes, yes, they do. A male could, could, well, could weigh well, well north of 185 pounds. Um, they are driven. If they want, they have the muscle and the mind to head for what they want. It's what makes them what they do. They're awesome. These, until you've seen a guy work a hound looking for a lost kid, you haven't lived. You know, it, it's really crazy. Do they make really good pets? It depends on you. Depends on your household. You up for a great big driven dog? Um, or, as we just heard this morning, I want my dog to have the drive to lay on the couch and sleep. Okay? That, so, do your research. There's a reason why there's so many labs in the world. Okay? I was a Labrador guy as far as my bomb dogs. They're, they're very, very PC. People love them. They're cute. They're good. They can be drivey or not, you know, whatever. And there's a ton of them that are working as service dogs. There's a reason for it. The retrievers in general. Now, people will say, say okay, well, retrievers, so then gun dogs, sporting dogs, that's good. Uh, maybe. Maybe. But we have been into a lot of homes with folks that pick up a pointer, and they're some of the most beautiful animals living your Vishla, your Weimariner, the guy who did all the Weimariner stuff on the calendars. And it made those photos, made it look like these dogs were just these couch potatoes and stuff. Oh, I beg to differ. <laughs> they are driven, pure. Many of them are very, very pure in their drives. So they, they if you don't hunt them, they are high, high energy. So what breed or type? We're not going to tell you that. We have zero restriction as trainers. Now I say that because for a while, back in the 90s, um, I was one of the only trainers taking both the Sharpe and the Chow Chow. Um, there were some problems with that uh, that I won't go into, you know, whatever, but I don't believe in it. You know, if you're a dog trainer, it's a dog, then be able to sort the behavior. So you choose what you love, hair, I mean, guys, is a husky beautiful? Yes, it is. Uh, Samoyed, Malamutes, you know, the sledders. But I have seen delightful friends of mine who are groomers, 
hauling out pounds and pounds and pounds of hair out of one dog. It's almost unbelievable what they can produce. So be careful. Look at your allergies. Look, you know, look at what's happening. Well, like like with the whole allergy thing, um, people will say, "Oh, this dog is uh, hypoallergenic." Yeah, hypoallergenic. Well, it's still an animal. So um, you know, if it's not shedding a bunch, see that makes it more manageable. But got to groom it though. Yeah, I mean, you know, there is care that comes into the animal, uh, brushing. Uh, bathing or wiping down um, and it's like if you have allergies it is you know it depends on which way it will sort for you as the human and the dog so those are things you really have to think about um, and they're not all they're, it's not black or white okay there, there's not hypoallergenic and not hypoallergenic that's not true yeah um, the dogs are on a spectrum um, some of your Bichon, uh, uh, your Madagascars, uh, you know, some of these uh, rarer breeds are almost completely hypoallergenic. That can also have some health issues down the, the road as far as skin, that kind of thing. Yeah. Poodles were very popular for that purpose. You know, they don't shed. So generally speaking, they're going to be less uh, allergy driven for people than other dogs but you got yourself a great big duster right okay so the dog itself but if you run the dog through a whole bunch of ragweed with that cool poofy uh, soft coat you're gonna bring a whole bunch of ragweed into your house and people so you have to does that make sense you have to kind of just think your way through um, especially people who have never either had a dog or they had this wonderful, amazing dog in their, in their childhood and they're looking to replicate what's going on there. Well, that's probably not, you know, it's going to be a different experience, but it can be an extraordinarily joyful experience if you'll put some time into it. Now, having said all that, right? Okay. So you're going to follow your heart. You're going to do some research. Um, and you're going to look at more than one litter, please do that. A lot of people don't. They are stone stopped by the darling puppies, you know, and they will make a couple of decisions that will impact their lives. We promise you. We brought the kids. Eh, that probably wasn't the wisest thing to do for the first time. And we have two children who cannot agree on a puppy. Right? So what do we do? We get two puppies. <laughs> oh. That is the start of some challenges. It, it de develops what we call pack within a pack. And often we, we run into students that are just, they're, they're done. That's, it was too much, too, too, you know. And um, the, the children in particular, or, or maybe a partner or spouse, whatever, there's a please, 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 can I have a puppy? <sighs> Fine, have a puppy. And it wears off. There's times, especially with children, you know, there's especially when the poop scooping comes around or the feeding or the, you know, whatever, take the dog out. You know, I, I'm tired of that already, you know, whatever. And so mom or dad or both or the other partner, they're left with this dog to care for. And we have a problem. So, um, I often tell people, now, breeders can be as much sales as anyone else, um, but if they're trying to push you to take a puppy uh, for money purposes or whatever, you know, back away. You know, that's back out of that. that. There's no, you know, look, do your time, say, you know, I need to think about this for 24 hours. I would highly, we tell people, think about this for 24 hours. Get away from the puppy, you know, go home, think about what's required, what's the deal. Oh, you know that, that puppy is so awesome. You know, I, I really, I think we could do that. Great! Then you're ready. Now, some parents will say, well, we would like our children to be involved. Of course you could. So we say, Let's separate out two, or maybe one in this litter and one in this litter over here, and give them 
of a limited and specific choice. Not both. Make the choice. Now, do we handle multiple dogs, multiple puppies, litter mates all the time? Yes, we do. Can it be done? Of course it can be done. It's just more challenging. We're trying to smooth your path there a little bit, okay? Now, we're gonna get specific. Puppy selection. There are only two things I'm gonna ask you to do after you've done this. Well, there's three. The one is if possible, you wanna see the parents. Everybody remembers the book, Marley and Me? Is it those of you who've read that book? Okay, it, there's a very interesting part in there. They see this, uh, the dam, okay, the female, and she's beautiful. She's delightful and marvelous, and they're going, oh yeah, whatever. Okay, so they take the puppy, the male was not available supposedly. On the way out to the car, I believe the book says some psychopathic, dirty, wide-eyed, crazy thing ran past him. Uh, they didn't know really at the time what that was. That was the male. And Marley ended up trashing their house over thunder and some other things later on. So you want to ask to see the parents or ask about them if you can. Then there's two things I want you to look for. One, does the puppy approach you boldly? Okay, does it trot up to you? That's if you call, make a noise, whatever, it comes over because it's curious. It doesn't go hide in the corner or, you know, shy away from you or to you whatever, so that we would have some fear issues there. Does the puppy approach you boldly? Number two, can you hold the puppy on its back? Now, take this with a grain of salt, okay? The puppy doesn't know you. So you may have to kind of comfort it, hold it, whatever, but is it willing to lay in your arms or on your lap, upside down, with its belly exposed, without abnormal struggle? If it starts to desperately twist and struggle, trust me, don't, don't do that. You know, that, that, that puppy right there, that will be a challenge uh, from a trainer's point of view. All right, what about an older dog? Very, very similar, but it's a little more complicated as far as the dog itself. Number one, exactly the same. Does the puppy or dog approach you? Does it come up to you? Does it have interest in you? Now, guys, dogs can fall out into two separate camps. You know, there's dogs that are very people specific. You know, they're, they're person centric. They like people. They think it's fun and they push it at you. Pat me, pat me. Was that something we would address as trainers? Sure, but you know that the dog likes you. Is the dog ignoring you entirely? Much more interested in other dogs, you know, whatever, what, birds, whatever, not real people centric. That's not going to change. You say, well, I'll give him treats or whatever. Guys, you're talking about genetics there. You know, the dog just isn't terribly people oriented. I mean, there is, I mean, we've been to shelters and things like that and have watched people looking at dogs. And um, I mean, there was one time specifically, the dog really could have cared less about those people. And he just kept turning, trying to get to the other dogs and wanted to play. Um, and it was a beautiful animal. Um, and I don't know whether they got it or not, but I was looking at that and I was like, eh. But that's what they were saying, right? Yeah. Darcy and I were talking because even with what they were looking at, look how beautiful he is. Look as a, the, guys, you can't, this is not a place you can be clueless. All right. You have to, you have to understand what you're seeing there. That is a dog that isn't, and bolting out the door, which is one of our big ones and stuff, that dog's going to leave. It has no interest. You know, what, it, it's, it's very, very difficult to overcome that kind of thing. Now, with an older dog, it isn't on the back. Okay, do not try and force an older dog, particularly one you're just meeting, onto its back. Don't do that. If you pet the dog and it rolls over onto its back, that tells you the dog is very subordinate. Okay, that, that the dog is, is willing to expose its, its loin and belly to you. But I want you to pet the dog in two specific places. Okay, you're going to start under the chin and then up and over the head. And you're looking for any head shyness. Okay, the dog yanking its head away from you. Then you're gonna go down the back to the loin, to the butt. 
okay? And you're going to scratch at the top of the tail and you're gonna kind of run your hands down the loin onto the tummy while it's standing there. Look for a dog that, you know, if they, if they get the guys, that dog has issues. Um, now what those are, we don't know. Is it environmental, is it genetic, is it both, which is almost always the case. Avoid that trap. You want a dog that will curl up next to you. You want a dog that can be touched in any way. A dog where we mitigate as much unpleasantness as possible in blending the two of you together into a joyful package. Well, and especially if you have young children, um, yeah. that, that's critical because, I mean, we've come into situations where the dog is twitchy that way and they have young kids um, and you can watch the kids and you can watch the dog, but you cannot watch them 100% of the time. And if you have issues like that and you have a kid come in and is being a little rambunctious and the dog doesn't like it and it wants to uh, have a say about that, See, you're kind of going down a road that you could have avoided. So, um, especially if you have, you know, uh, children and young kids, um, that is even another place where I am really, um, I do my due diligence because I want, it's my job to take care of the dog, but it's my job to take care of my kids and make sure everything is, um, you know, going to be a workable situation. Yeah, it's... Um, dogs discipline one another. Um, so much of what we hear, people are, are crying, they're upset, you know, whatever, the dog is aggressive. That is hardly ever the case. True aggression is very, very rare. Um, with most dogs, uh, but kids without direction are, can be as much a problem as a dog without direction. And the dog will wait so long before it disciplines the child as a lesser member of the pack. So your training has to set up your pack paradigm, your structure, so that the children are ranked. You know, there, there's not, and there's forces involved there. It's a, it is not necessary to be, dogs don't hit. They don't even know what that is, you know? So, but they need to understand what you're trying to say because they're genetically coded with the drives, instincts, and character traits is that's the foundation of what we do here is dog psych, dog knowledge. So we say, how will the dog understand what's happening? I don't understand these little humans at all. He's in my food, he's in my toys, whatever. I say, well, there's ways, it's not your food, it's not your toys. They all belong to the pack leader and that's the way a dog pack works. You, you don't really mark out your little territory, whatever. Uh, you know, potty training is going to be an issue regardless. Uh, will some older dogs come potty trained? Yes, for a specific space, but that may not be your home. Uh, there's dogs that will come in and say, yeah, I, I'm not going in here because you're with me and I love you, whatever, and boom, it's, uh, you know, I'm not going in here. But there's a whole bunch of dogs that come in, I don't know what this space is, I'm gonna put my ink on it. I'm gonna write my name with P. And then people will say, oh, you know, the dog's, you know, two years old or seven years old or whatever. Um, and it's like, oh, he can't be potty trained. And uh, that is not true. No. As long as the dog is, uh, you know, physically okay and mentally okay. Well, we've trained, you know. Twelve-year-olds. Yeah. Dogs. Dogs. So. Uh, not children. Dogs. <laughs> But that's where we come in and we can go, oh, we're going to take you through potty training and uh, show you how to get this dog so that it understands and it's going outside to go potty. Now, look, um, we want you to succeed. We love you. We do. We love your dogs. We love people and dogs. That's why we do the emotional support stuff. It's exceedingly, exceedingly rewarding. But we can make you a promise. We make you a promise. We will change your life in the first session with us. I promise. That's, it's not magic, it's not whatever, it's dog knowledge. We're very good at what we do, we are. We care, and we've seen a whole bunch, you're not gonna surprise us. I know there's a whole bunch of people out here that watch and say, oh my goodness, but what about, but what about? We're here to help you. 
but I can pro you're not going to ask me something that we haven't dealt with in the past. The dog bites me a whole bunch, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yes, puppies explore. Our puppy seminar goes through all of that. Now, talking about training, uh, care concerns and stuff are really a whole nother deal about what, what is expected. Mm -hmm. Um, is there a question? Uh, yeah, so, There's a question. Um, uh, we had a question about uh, babies and dogs and training. See, we take you through all that. We teach you, you know, it's, it's your pack paradigm. So we, we teach you how to show the dog that you guys are the ones who administer the space and your baby or your small children are yours. They don't belong to the dog. And so, uh, I mean, we say this all the time, but it's just like you bring your whole family together in perfect partnership with this dog. So that is something that we do all the time, that we help people. Uh, they've, they've had the dog for an extended period of time, then they have a baby, you know, so we help them with that so that it can go smoothly. Um, or we have people who have small children and then they have a baby and then they bring a dog in. It still is the same thing. We we go over your pack paradigm and teach you how to bring that all together so it works. Now I will say, that, uh, an older dog there, a rescue dog, that's where you're going to have um, possible challenges, because you, if, you, if you don't know the history of the dog, um, we don't know why the dog is in the shelter. Well, it could be because it's 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 had some issues with children or whatever else the dog might have. Um, so a puppy. Who, that, that it, that's one of the things about a puppy is it grows up with your family. Now, your family just e exists. That's, that's a part of life. So now in a dog pack, mama is most unpleasant about her puppies. Everybody in the pack wants to play with the puppies. Everybody does. Young dogs can be stupid. They're, they're ill-mannered. That their law and the ranking members of the pack, the hierarchy or royalty, we would call it, are going to kick the crap out of those younger dogs because you know what? You don't mess with puppies. So an infant is as close to really a true puppy to a dog. That's why so many dogs love babies. They're, they're, they tend to want to sit by them, whatever, because it's a puppy. You know, that it's cool. They can smell the DNA you know, that comes off of you if, if, if it's your biological parent there, even if not, if it's adoption or whatever, they very quickly get, you know, okay, this belongs to these people and I am to be mannerly. Can they act out? Yes. Yeah, especially if it, like Dark say, if it changes the pack paradigm, uh, everybody knows it's had a baby, uh, it, it's pretty time consuming, uh, you know, and emotionally and mentally consuming. The dog is aware of that and may not like it. You know, so you're, there are tools that are introduced right in the very first lesson we do that will help you with that. Now, we've had a bunch of people ask us about the group uh, online training. We are ready to rock and roll uh, with that. Um, we're excited, extremely so. Um, it is, Normally, $450 for a group lesson of six sessions, okay, if you come to us. We're going to offer this online training for $249, okay, which is a $200, a $201 discount. And there will be eight sessions, eight right? Sessions. Eight, eight, sessions. eight sessions. Because online, we want to make sure that everything's cool. It'll be fun. Uh, it'll be um, interactive in that you will be able to text or email questions to us and we trust us. We'll be on it um, to help you with, with anything you want. The link for that will go up this weekend. Okay, today is the 15th. So this weekend, hi Gypsy, <laughs> psycho, um, as well as the sign up for our resource center. Now the resource center, we're gonna we're gonna have things like breed spotlights, uh, things that we hear every single day. It's what we do, and I know for you, so many of these things are. Man, did I make a mistake? Am I a bad pet owner? Am I feeding my dog the wrong food? 
Am I, I heard this and this, that if, if I don't do this, we can, we will help you with all of that. We will provide information for you and you will be able to get into this. Now, I'm going to run up a, a little bit of a, a flag um, as a heads up, ears up, is what ears we up. say, ears up. We are in the process of developing a kids camp. Um, I, it is a passion of mine that I have, I have been after for decades. I have trained hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children and teenagers. They make fabulous dog trainers and handlers. Fabulous. We love them to death. Well, online, uh, kind of, you know, people are <laughs> kind of locked down right now. We're going to provide you with a chance. Uh, the ages will be split. Okay, the curriculum will be split from 8 to 12 and from 13 to 17. So, so we don't have the little ones going over here or the teenagers going over here because it's boring, whatever. And we promise it's going to be totally awesome. Uh, we're looking at 12 sessions, two times a week for six weeks. Um, it'll be extremely affordable uh, because we know people a little bit tight. So keep an eye out in the next couple of weeks uh, to add to our group online training. We will provide not just a training, um, what, regime for your children. We'll do some of that, of course but a good ownership program. Well, and a lot of times we've run into people's houses um, and they got the, kid, the dog for the kids and mom's up to her eyeballs, you know, or dad's up to his eyeballs because the kids are uh, failure to feed. Um, Poop scoop. Yeah, potty training, all those, uh, watching the dog, all those things. So um, it is, joyful to bring kids and dogs together and show them how to be responsible with the animal um, and I mean the joy that we see between a kid and a dog is just it's amazing it's what it's made for yeah now as you know we can say things to your kids that you cannot at least and have them listen and do um, the whole parent kid thing that's we, we intend for this to be added value for you. So when you see the stuff start to come up on this, if you'll like and share and comment to us questions, things you're, you would like to see. Uh, we are feeding schedules, keeping the water clean, potty training, poop scooping. Where can you be with the dog? Um, crating the dog. I mean, all of those things we see all the time, we will introduce in a fun, upbeat manner and we will provide us with the younger kids especially we're going to provide them with some uh, stories some reading material uh, teenagers we got all kinds of fun stories and stuff teens uh, have a different sense of humor and stuff and we'll, we'll, we'll make we'll make your teenager smile so uh, if you'll look for that it'll start to come out in a week or two um, to where we, we start to advertise for that um, we're looking at kind of a summerish. It, it depends on the, the whole virus thing. Sometime maybe in May, I'd like to look at launching this um, in the afternoon. So after uh, home, if the kids are still doing home stuff, we're, we're out of that. So we'll do our best to make that a great experience. Our group lessons here are a delight. We love our students. They don't like to leave. Um, <laughs> We don't like them to leave, but that's sometimes you have to turn the lights off eventually, right? So we, we specialize in a warm and caring environment. Um, we'll make it fun for you. You'll have everything you need, uh, and uh, we won't leave you untrained. Well, one of the things we say all the time, is like we are, uh, you know, having a relationship with you, the dog owner. I mean, we love dogs. But we love you people. And so uh, we are the consultant for the life of your dog. I had somebody call me the other day. It had been like four years since I had talked to them. They had a question. I have people that uh, maybe it was a year ago that we did training. And I mean, I've had actually a lot of questions over people being home and their dogs were used to being in a crate and all of a sudden the dogs are, you know, have more access to the humans because they're home. Um, I've had a ton of those questions. 
lot of people looking at getting dogs. Yeah. So it's it's like we care about you and your partnership with the animal um, and having it be a success for the life of the dog. So uh, we answer questions from getting the dog to when it comes time, you know, for um, euthanasia or things like that, or if the dog gets sick. sick. So um, we can help you with all of those things. Shoot your questions in. Okay, we'll be looking, we'll be back here uh, next, we next Wednesday for a noontime question and answer. Um, we will we'll go back to your, we kind of, we had a whole bunch about getting a dog. So we, we kind of, this was kind of a specialized one. But we're looking for your questions. Please uh, shoot them in to us so that we will address them. Um, and thank you ever so much. Watch for the link for the, sign up for the Resource Center, which is free, and for our group training online. Have a next day, and we will see Be you next week. Be safe out there. Yep. We'll see you next week.